come around here then. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, that's it. R- right. Just scoot around here. Here we go. This is just a bunch of adverts for tortoises? I know. I'm buying a tortoise. Why? I swear to me, you've never heard of the Red Valley Sea Bolt until I just told you. What? Why? Swear to me, or we're going to have a problem. I swear? You've never heard of it. I'm learning a lot today. You swear? I swear. You swear? Could you take your hand off my knee? Look, Warren, if they're sending the butter wouldn't melt a uh, um, uh, new boy looking for Red Valley, it'll be for a reason. Look, Mr. Porlock, you've been really helpful. I'm very grateful. I said I wouldn't take up much of your valuable time, and neither of us have blinked for about 30 seconds, so... down. Are you recording this, Warren? Am I what? Recording this? You should be. I am. You're recording this conversation. Right now. You bet I am. Right, this this, this is very funny. This is a very fine joke. I'm sorry if accounts have treated you badly in the I'm past. I'm not making fun of you, Warren. If I wanted to do that, I'd draw attention to your puby beard and your little toddler hands. Oh, nice. I, I feel so much better now. Stationery is just down the corridor. There's dictaphones in there. Go in and help yourself. I want you to tape every conversation you have now, Warren. You might need it. Righty-ho. Will do. I know how many are in there. I'll count them once you're gone. It's been wonderful meeting you, Mr. Pollock. Uh, call me Gordon. I sure will. Uh, Warren. Yes? Have you streamlined any other department yet? Um, yes. I did. It was a terrible project. We closed the whole department. How did that feel? It was awful. Uh, don't get a tortoise. Why not? They never love you back. Warren, uh, I very much enjoyed our meeting this afternoon. Yeah, right. And I'd be happy to help. Uh, my mobile number is 077 Hi, uh, Warren. I'm sending you something. To your house. I hope you don't mind. I got your address from payroll. I just pretended to be you on the phone. <laughs> it was funny, actually. Playing this back in my mind, I'm probably really creeping you out, aren't I? I am sorry. I don't get to talk about this stuff very much. I'm sorry I pretended to be you on the phone to payroll and shouted at them to give me your address. It probably sounded weird when I just blurted that out in my last message. Anyway, uh, call me when you get my package. Uh, I sent an overhead courier, actually, so you should pro- well, there's a package for you. Korea delivered it a while ago. How the fuck did he do that? Warren Godby. Mr. Porlock. Gordon, please. Right. Uh, Gordon, it is. Did you get my package? I did. You got that here really fast. You know the voicemails you left me earlier, the whole getting my address yes, thing? Yes, yes, yes. I'm oh, sorry about that. I just wanted to move quickly. Throw you right in, so to speak. Throw me into what? Are you recording this conversation? No, oh, I... No, there's one thing I asked you to do. If you're not being careful enough, even at this stage, I don't know if I want to take this any further. Gordon, this is all really... Please turn on your recorder, hold it up to the phone, and record it. <laughs> Fine. Hang on. You're alone, I take it. Sorry, uh, say that again. You're alone? Yes, it's late. My wife's in bed already. Is that it? Is it on? Wait, hang on a second. Wait. Yep, it's on. Okay. Okay, go ahead. Oh, wait, should we start this conversation again, or what? No, no, let's just carry on. Well, that doesn't sound very formal to me. Well, it isn't formal. It's private. I, I thought that was the point. What? I want you to take this seriously, okay? I do. I am. I need you to. I promise you, I'm taking this seriously. Come on, you asked me to record it. I went and got your dictaphone. Go ahead, please. You mean like, like, uh, Walt Disney? I swear to God, if you say anything about Walt Disney's frozen fucking head, I'm hanging up this phone right now. <laughs> I, I don't know what you mean. Don't fucking laugh at me. I'm not laughing at you. I just don't know what you're trying to tell me. I haven't mentioned it yet. Because this guy Gordon told you not to? No, because it's 20 past 7 in the morning and I'm scrubbing fish skin off a frying pan. I'll speak to him about it later. 
Gordon's just an old fruit. The whole company is crawling with this kind of guy. Little mole men who never see daylight and want to be in the X-Files. Do you want to be in the X-Files? Hello? Did you listen to it? Hello? Did you listen to the tape? Gordon. No, no. I'm the other guy you met yesterday who put his balls on the line sending recordings of highly sensitive material to your house. Uh, of course, of course. Is this a bad time? You seem to have a big boy voice on. No, no, now it's fine. Oh, look, I'm going to be in the car park of the North Building at 7pm tonight. I've got a gold colour Vauxhall Astra. Well, I mean, it's more coppery, but I like to say it's gold. I call it the golden bullet. It doesn't go very fast. Thanks for telling me that, but I don't... Yeah, meet me in the car. But I recommend you get to the end of the tape first, as you obviously haven't. Then we can discuss how interesting it is. I, I actually have a lot of other things that I need to... Motherfucker. This guy's just... He's interesting. I thought it'd be good to get to know as much about... Well, you know, whatever this is, before I went in all guns blazing. I just want to work this guy, Gordon. I, I, I like to be thorough. Uh, don't worry. Oh, I'm not worried, buddy. Are you recording? Jesus, I, I just got in. Aren't you recording this anyway? Of course I am, but you need a copy for your own records. Can't I just have a copy of yours? Now you're being ridiculous. There, done. Continue. How did you enjoy the tape? Why have this tape on at all? What are you talking about? Well, you could set the scene just by talking and then play me the tape. No, but this is the atmosphere. I'm trying to show you So that... you're, you're literally playing this as like a backing track while you make this speech setting your scene. Well, that makes it sound cynical. <laughs> no, it's, it's just... What? We're really doing this. Whoa, whoa, what, it's what's this? It's 6am and I haven't slept, not for a minute. I was... Okay, this is Wood's log. I was intending to have you all brought up to speed, but... I didn't think you were going to ask so many fucking questions, and now, well, now my timing's off. This is more than one recording. Yeah. I've got the audio from the cryo suite, and I've got Wood's logs, and I've cut them together. Why would you do that? To make it more dramatic. To draw you in. Get you to invest, like a sizzle reel. Why are you looking at me like that? Nothing. It's just... not what I was expecting. No shit, Warren. Look, now I've lost my place. It isn't a joke, and you came to me to do an audit on an old account, not to listen to... No one should hear that. Why are you smiling? I don't know. I smile when things get awkward. Gordon, why are you sharing this stuff with me? I have been following this as closely as I can for years, all right? I've been waiting to be able to share it with someone so we can expose it, so we can end it. They must be working on something right now, and someone's dropped the ball bad enough that accounts have picked up the trail, and they've sent you. I'm not the man for this, all right? This is this is too big. I'm not Clive Schill. Clive Schill? The golden boy? Yeah, you want a result? Go to him. I don't trust Clive fucking Schill. How many men below the age of 40 are called Clive? I'm not your guy. Warren, a guy like me asks a guy like you... To meet him in a car park in the dark, there's got to be a chance I was going to stab you or at least ask you to toss me off or something. What? But you came anyway, didn't you? Because you're good at this. I can tell. You care. I'm taking a huge gamble trusting you. I suck at my job, all right? What? I didn't even know what this job was, okay? My wife got it for me. Oh, right. Look, I've been out of work for a while, okay? I... I wasn't well, I... I wasn't well. My wife had to look after me, she's old friends with Doug Holder. They got me this job so I could start fresh, okay? I I can't get involved in something like this. So why did you even seek me out in the first place? Why are you here now? I don't know. Because you care. So, my sizzle wheel was too much. I'm sorry. That's probably my issue. I care very much about presentation, I'm sorry. But I could see it in your eyes. This stuff speaks to you. You give a shit. A long time ago, maybe. Not now. A long time ago? You're not Gandalf the fucking Grey. Look, so I don't know you, and you don't know me. Fine. I'm the one with everything to lose here. You've got the power to make something happen. Look. Will you just take these? I don't want to know what's in that bag, or Look, take the fucking bag. There's more in there that I need you to hear. Just sleep on it, okay? Just 
think about it for a little while. People are losing their lives in this company. Fine. Just don't call me, all right? All right. I leave it to you. I'm going home. I, I just needed to go home. Was this because of that guy you were talking to? Graham? Gordon Porlock. He sounds like a herbal remedy. It's nothing to do with anyone. It's just me. Gordon Porlock, secret warlock. Uh, Warren? Uh, Gordon? How's it going? It's going great. If I sound distracted, it's because I'm about to complete a level very near the end of Sonic the Hedgehog 2, and it's extremely tense and exciting. Sonic the Hedgehog 2? Well, you know Sonic, right? Well, yeah, of course I do. I loved it when I was little. Wait, which level? Uh, Wing Fortress Zone. Oh, right. Right near the end, then. Do you want me to call you back? No, oh, no. Truth be told, I had to use the level select sheet to get this far. First time, I couldn't even get past the, um, what's the one with all the hills? A uh, hilltop zone. And then I couldn't get past the one with all the oil. Uh, oil ocean zone. Oh, you really do know Sonic. Hey, all the guys were Sonic in my school. Really? Mine were all Mario. Oh, so you struck out alone with Sega then? Uh, not quite. I had both. Oh, wow. Fancy. Well, actually, that was just one method of very poor compensation from my father to validate rampant domestic abuse in the family home, but Star Wing was pretty good, I suppose. Warren, are you okay? I'm fine. I mean, I've obviously been drinking, but it's not what you're imagining. I'm... I'm not surrounded by empty whiskey miniatures from the minibar. Honestly, I have to take so much medication at the moment that I get like this on, like, two beers. And that's what I've had. Two beers. With dinner. That's why I can't finish Sonic 2 without a level select. I can call back another time. Prove your credentials to me, Gordon. Tell me the cheat. The what? The level select cheat code for this game. Come on. dum 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 Don't you fucking Google that shit. I know you're sitting by your fucking computer, you big geek. No, 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 no. I was just remembering. Sound test option, wasn't it? I remember. What the hell was a sound test? Why was it even there? No. I mean, why would you want to test the sound? Numbers, Gordon. What were the sound test numbers? Okay. Don't Google it. 19? Ding! 60, 60 something. Don't Google it. I'm not. I'm not. 65. Ding, ding, dong! Oh, then it's not. 9 and 17. Or 7 and You're on the ropes. You fuck this up. And you are dead to me. I'm going to hang up this phone. I'm going to piss on it. It's not 19 again, is it? No, we just had that. Um, 9 and 17. Oh, man, that was exhausting. You did it. That was amazing. You have my permission to continue with whatever reason you were actually calling me about. Oh, right, yeah. Uh, Gordon? Look, Warren, um, I feel I've thrown you into all this too fast. It's a lot to take, and maybe Gordon, I should... Gordon, you're talking very strangely. I'm literally just a second starting the last level of this game. It's going to be very difficult for you to go serious on me, because this level is called... The Death Egg Zone. The fucking Death Egg! What were they thinking? Anyway, proceed. Well, that's it, really, Warren. I'm just saying, uh, well, maybe we can step back a little from the whole Red Valley thing. What? Why? Well, you said you were going through some stuff, that you're on medication, and now you're off dealing with your family stuff. Who said I was doing that? Have you been talking to someone about me? No. Gordon? Okay, Clive Schill asked me about you and said uh, you were going through a lot, and, well, well I thought... fuck that guy. Through his trousers... Gordon, I, I, I guess I am going through a lot. I am sat in a travel inn with a second-hand retro games console after having a very upsetting chat with my single remaining blood relative over the grave of my shit father before getting humiliated in my favourite second-hand game shop by a fat child. My meds mean I can't even drink a decent amount of beer before I collapse in a heap, and truth be told, the side effects of that medication mean I am utterly unable to even have sex with my wife, who is understandably exasperated with my behaviour. Who could blame her? Oh. Oh, fuck. Fuck! What? I did it! Did what? Dr. Robotnik! I blew up his stupid little dick robot! I killed that fat well, fucker! Warren, talk quieter. <laughs> I murdered him! I smote his fucking ruin! Good, good, that's great, man. <laughs> the end sequence is dying. Oh, man, I cried the first time I saw this. It's all black and white, isn't it? All the animals are sad because they think Sonic's dead. Mm. Google it, we'll watch it together. Okay. You got it? Oh, wait. Yeah, I have it on. The music alone. Did Michael Jackson write some music for this? No, that was Sonic 3. I don't think anything ended up in the finished game. Gordon, 
You are a trivia monger. Whoa. I know, right? Uh, like, uh, like Sylvester Stallone in... <laughs> Say it. In fucking Demolition Man. Demolition Man, motherfucker. That's a really exciting idea, Warren. I know. I mean, I mean, it's horrible, of course. Oh, yeah, it's terrifying. So we're going to drop in on some guy I know in Derby tomorrow. Wait, what? He's a rep for some of the products that go into our prisons. I thought we should meet him. In Derby? Can you not just call it? Well, it's a pit stop. On our way to Red Valley. You want to go to Red Valley? You want to go to Red Valley, Gordon Porlock. And you've been waiting for someone to give you the show. That's why you picked me. Warren, uh, we need to think this through. Let's do it. Get in your golden bullet. Pick me up. We can meet at our services somewhere. I'll send you the details. Uh, okay. Off you fuck now. I'm going to play virtual racing. Right. 70 quid when it came out for a Mega Drive game. Madness. Yeah, that's what's mad. Ha oh, ha, oh, fuck you. Bye. Morning. Hey. Feeling all right? Yeah. Really? No. I feel like a nutsack. This isn't a hangover, by the way. It's a migraine. Is that true? My pills bring them on sometimes. It's always worst in the mornings. Probably didn't help being pissed up last night, though. Yeah, I think that's reasonable, yeah. Do you want to drive? Please don't make me do that. Don't worry about it. Look, I've got biscuits. Oh, God. I love you. Road trip, then. Yep. Road trip. Okay. <laughs> Let's do this. <laughs> We're going to go to Red Valley and solve mysteries, uh -huh. uncover secrets, blow this shit wide open, stand in the shadow of the mighty ball bag. I don't think you can stop here, actually. Oh, yeah. Oh, OK. Hang on. Oh. Yeah, lol. Oops. <laughs> oh, fuck off! Why is it so crispy? Because it's old. Ugh. Don't look like that. I don't wank off over diagrams of the M25. Sniff it if you must. Wait, left. what did it say? Oh, keep left. Oh, they're there. They're, they're oh. there. That you might be impressionable or prone to paranoia or manic behaviour. And that uh, I wasn't being a positive influence on you with all my interests. Well, I don't know where we would get that idea. I'm only thacking it up the M1 with a raging hangover after drunkenly yelling at my boss that I'm off to search for a mythical research facility where maniacs are freezing people's bodies until they shatter like china plates or are liquefied into toxic sludge without telling my wife. You didn't tell your wife? She wouldn't take it very well. I expect you may have to tell her at some point. Like, probably today. That is a distinct possibility. Have you got any sweets? I think you've heard way too much about me, Gordon. Tell me about you. There's really not much to tell. Oh, you're, you're serious? You're, you're not going to tell me anything? I... Uh, I'm sorry, man. Don't worry about it. Sorry to ask. You can't freeze a soul. My journey into the cryonic void. Oh, that's, um... That's a memoir. A draft of uh, a memoir. Your memoir? Uh, it's a work in progress. I thought there wasn't much to say about you. You've recorded a memoir. You filled the whole tape. Well, not the whole tape. It says part five. It's not ready for public consumption. Gordon, I choose to believe you. You know, I don't think I can listen to anyone talking about brains or monkeys or margaritas of any kind. Do you have any music, anything at all? Oh, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah that green one. What is it? That's my old band. Yeah. <laughs> <That's crank. laughs> she sells out every belief that she has. Remember that scientist guy she's in love with the whole time? David, he went to Mint. Yes, she's in love with him for like 10 years and then blows him off for a pretty boy. That was Paul Rudd. I would choose Paul Rudd. She's an animal rights activist who then wants to wear a real fur coat. She hates corporations, but then fills her house with pottery barn furniture and goes to work for the big corporate massage company in secret. Phoebe is a fraud. Rachel turns up at Monica's house in the very first episode, having left a guy at the altar, right? Monica is her best friend from school. She wasn't even invited to the wedding. She's not even an evening guest. She gets off with Ross the night Monica and Chandler get engaged because, God forbid, an event happens that isn't about her. On Monica's wedding day, it's all about Rachel getting pregnant. When she has the baby, she steals Monica's baby name. And then Monica ends up not being able to have kids. You know, that's not Rachel's fault. Well, everyone says that. Well, yeah, yeah, I'm with a friend. Or it's just a, just a, just a, a guy from archives. You see, the thing is, the music, despite the technical complexity and outwardly aggressive tone, is, as I'm sure you can tell, incredibly melodic.
melodic and uplifting. Sentimental in many ways. Yeah, it's very sweet. Thank you. You told him to suck your dick. What? Whoa, whoa, I never said that. Really? I would never say that. Oh, so what did you say? Warren? I said he could suck a dick. I wonder how he got those two confused. Yeah, that's totally different. Who's that? Shut up. Uh, that's that's Gary Hemlock or whoever it is. Oh, it's Gordon Porlock? Oh, and I suppose he's taping all of this on his little dictaphone, is he? Sorry, man, she's my wife. I'm an archivist, Mrs. Godby. It's just a habit. Stop talking. Then why did you tell him he could stick it up his shit pipe? <laughs> Shut, Shut up, up Gordon! Gordon. Who's the worst friend, Mrs. Godby? Gordon, be quiet. I listened to 75 minutes of power metal. Which you were into by side B. And you said you were only pretending to be napping, so I'd stop talking about my pitch for a live-action adaptation of The Cimmerillion, but I saw a fly land on your face, and you didn't move, so I know you got some sleep. I just... I don't know who I think I am carrying on like this. I have no idea what I'm doing. Oh, you've just got the dreads. Existential crises are an essential part of the recovery experience. You remember when you were at school and you would get bullied? What makes you think I was bullied? Who did you say you wanted to play Eru, the supreme being in the Cimmerillion? Danny DeVito. So, when you were bullied... I'm sorry, I'm, I'm getting all weird and intense. Yeah. <laughs> Enough of this self-pitying beta male shit, please. Are you alright? What do you mean? You've been quiet for ages, I just wondered if you were alright. I'm fine, I'm fine. It's just cold and late. Yeah. Alright, sit tight. I'll be right back. She gives me the keys, after making lots of strange comments about me and Warren getting back to nature, and that the Bothy is a lovely place where men can be men and we can be true to ourselves, and no one will disturb us. And when I get back, the car is gone. Warren is gone. I had to wake up George and Betty. I had no idea what to tell these people, so I told them we'd had a lover's tiff and begged them to let me borrow their car. Betty winked at me and gave me the key to this dinosaur car, and as I'm leaving, I can hear George from inside shout, I wish I knew how to quit you! Oh man, what the hell is this place? Oh fuck. There he is. Oh, Warren? Warren, are you okay? I'm here, Gordon. Yeah, yeah, um, look, this is really freaking me out, so... Could you please turn around? Unless, well, well, unless you haven't got a face or you've turned into a little Japanese girl or something. I have a face, Gordon. Do you lower your torch? Oh, oh. Oh, yeah, yeah, sorry. Thank you. You took my car. I'm sorry. I just, I don't know what's happening. I, I had to come here. Well, how did you know how to get here? I don't know. Please don't be mad. Fine. Thank you. I had to pretend we were a couple to get George and Betty to lend me their car. Okay. You can explain it when we're back. No, that's fine. I, I can't see anything. It's like the bottom of the ocean. It's right there. Just turn your torch off and wait for a minute. You'll see it. I'll take your word for it. I thought you'd be thrilled. Standing in the shadow of the mighty ball bag. Well, there aren't any shadows because it's three in the morning and I'm freezing my balls off. I thought you said the air out here was amazing. Amazingly fucking cold. So have you seen enough? Can we come back in the morning? No. Oh, come on. I lost you there. You have to slow down. There's a door here. Right. Or shall we... Ow! Why would you kick the door? Well, it's locked, isn't it? Well, have you tried it? No. You see? It's open. Which is totally normal. And I want to go home. Do you have anything you want to tell me, Gordon? What do you mean? Warren! Stop being so bloody dramatic! Really? Warren, what are you trying to say? How did I know how to get here tonight? What are you talking about? You were the only person who could have cancelled that prison visit. You were the only one who knew about it. <laughs> you, 
you think I stopped us visiting your mate or whoever who I don't know anything about? W Warren, you took my car and came here in the middle of the night. And yet you still found your way here. Oh, fuck this. Give me my keys. No. Give me the fuck. Warren, please stop walking away like that. Please. This is too weird now. I, I don't like it. You're here. You made it all by yourself. Uh, he's not by himself. Whoa! How long have you been standing there? I... We came together? Well, I mean, he came here. I, I, I just followed. Well, I'm sure that was meant to be sweet and not creepy at all. Warren, hey, hey well, Warren, you don't have to go with them. W Warren, what, what, where are they taking him? There is another more altruistic aspect to the role. Warren is your friend, is he not? Your only friend, perhaps. He's going back into hypersleep tonight. It would be beneficial, particularly in light of the behaviour you just saw, if there was someone here who had his back. Sounds like something his wife should do. Uh, Warren? Oh, hey! Clive didn't kill you and eat you. No, not yet. Are you... What is all this? Are you okay? So, they set me up in this very comfy bed that looks older than I am and hooked me up to all this monitoring and stuff. They were very nice about it. You seem pretty upbeat. Well, if I press this button here, I get morphine, so that's okay. I think they want to keep me calm because there's a chance I might be a violent criminal. Yeah. I've never headbutted anyone before. Or well, maybe I have. Maybe I'm the king of headbutts. It really hurt though. There must be a better technique to it. Yeah, probably. So they're not letting you you know, chip off home then? Uh, no. It's either work for them in perpetuity or a grisly murder. So you work for them now? Well, we always work for them. Besides, it's a lovely place to work. Wonderful team spirit. How are you doing, Warren? Well, uh, my recent life, as I know it, seems to have been entirely made up. My wife is actually Dr. Frankenstein, and I am the monster. And the guy in charge is a psychopath who places human life at a lower priority than cake. Mary Berry's Frankenstein. <laughs> <laughs> that's, not, that's not bad. Mary Berry. Yeah. And she didn't feel like she should be the one catching me up on all this crucial exposition. They're putting you back into hypersleep tonight. I don't know if they expect you to remember any of this when you come back out, or if... Or if I'll even be the same person. Right. Or a parsnip. Well, ideally not. I wish I could help you. And I could take you out of here. I had to convince them to let me even talk to you. That I could... No, no. I'm sorry. I, I'm sorry I brought you into any of this. You should never have been here tonight. Well, I did follow you, to be fair. Well, yeah, that's true. I mean, that is your fault, really. We could try. We could try and make a run for it. No, no. I want to do this. You do? If it turns out that I am, like... If I've done... It's probably just tax evasion. Or you didn't pay your TV license or something. They're, they're fierce on things like that these days. <laughs> yeah. And hey, you spent the last few weeks or months or however long feeling like you were going a bit crazy, right? Like you said to me that night in the car, you were crap at your job that you shouldn't be doing it. Like imposter syndrome, right? Well, we all have that. But you're literally right. You're not going crazy. You are an imposter. You're actually the star of a huge and wildly unethical science experiment. Wow, you're right. I mean, it's really a sunny side up situation. And you're a month younger than you thought you were. Oh, yeah. I mean, your life expectancy is probably a a fair bit shorter. Oh, really? Yeah. Uh, and your insides are probably... Ah, oh, brilliant, thanks. Hey, who wants to live forever, right? Your new job isn't reassuring people about to go into hypersleep, is it? Sorry. Uh, it's okay. <laughs> did you know a warren is the name for a rabbit's burrow? <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I did know that, yeah. Ah, but did you know warren is also the name of Bucky O'Hare's home planet. <laughs> Bucky O'Hare? Yeah, you know, the cartoon. 
Bucky, <laughs> Captain Bucky O'Hare, he <laughs> goes where no ordinary <laughs> rabbit would dare. <laughs> he had a friend that was a, a big gorilla with armor on. What was he called? Berserker? Oh, no, no. He was a, he was a berserker baboon. His name ah. was Bruiser. Uh, ah. and he used to say, Argh! <laughs> <laughs> I remember my mother, she recorded that for me off the TV when I was at school. She went through the opening credits, she was pausing it every few seconds so she could write down all the words to the song at the beginning. So when I got home, we could sing it together. That was nice of her. That really happened, didn't it? Yeah. Yes, of course. You're still going to be here when they wake me up? Yeah. I'll be here.